Mainly, I've uh, been here 70 years. I've been here most of my life. And uh, born in Las Cruces, lived in the Silver City area since about 41. I went to school in Cruces and then to Phoenix for a short while. And then back to this area. And the property you're on now is where? We're in Grant County at approximately the 92 mile marker uh, on 180, which would be close to the Arizona border and probably 60 miles from the Mexican border. And when I was a young man, uh, the young kids, high school kids, all worked at unskilled labor. It was part of my life. And uh, I see no reason that you can't use these school kids, young school kids, during the summer and during the time that they have off. And yet today I wouldn't even use one of my grandkids for to work because they're not, they're just not safety conscious or anything like that. And it's, it's just a change, but I do believe that that would, they could, feel that. And there's a lot of people out there that uh, could use the jobs. They won't. There's people out there that won't take the jobs even though they were offered. After the war in the early 50s, there were in the late 40s and the early 50s, a lot of immigrants come up, uh, migrant workers mainly. Uh, we used them for uh, haying down when my uh, was on the river and different things down there on the farm um, and the ranches that I worked on most all the ranches in the area usually had one or two uh, uh, immigrants in here uh, throughout the summer they would come usually early spring and uh, toward September October they would go back to Mexico you would have the same ones that come through and also new different uh, batches of uh, immigrants or wets that would come up through here. A lot of times there'd be one, maybe two at the most. And then in later years it became, uh, uh, they would come in, in, in groups of four to six, eight individuals at a time. Most of the t uh, time, they will relay uh, friendly areas or ranches and stuff back down the line. So you, this is one reason we always had uh, migrants coming in, in here because they could get water and a meal. And I also remember uh, the vaqueros that they used to bring up and the... Brasero program. Right. Now these people, this was in the 50s. Yes, and they, these, these men would work for something like $15 a month. Everything else went to either the uh, contractor that brought them up here and for their room and board. And they just minimum amount of money for, for those individuals. I used to think that was a, an abuse. abuse of those people. And then there was supposed to be money set aside for them that the United States government then gave to the Mexican government so that it would support them later in, in their retirement. And I don't think they get that either. Yeah, this, but you know, uh, when they work a month, uh, hard labor, and for fifteen dollars, and and a contractor makes the most out of that. It's to me is is not uh, right. It's abuse. It's practically slave labor. And. Did you see a change in the kinds of immigrants that were coming up through the years? Probably in the early 90s, well, 80s, I guess, would be the late part of the 80s. We'd have immigrants from like Juarez, and they were uh, not the same type of individual. They were um, more aggressive um, individuals that would come up. and. Uh, were they wanting to work also, or was there... They would be here just for a short time. So that was the type of individuals that uh, little, that started coming up a little later. And then... Um, so, did they threaten you? 
no, I have never been threatened by uh, individuals. And the last one, probably 16 or 18 years old, he was on, or 16 or 18 years ago, he was a, an older individual, and he would come up. He always came here. This was pretty much a a route for him to migrate through, going from here to the northern country, northern part of the country, up to um, Kansas and Colorado, and points east, but it was a migratory route. Uh, they would usually be picked up in Glenwood or Reserve. They usually had a rendezvous up there at a certain date to be picked up and go north. 180 is almost a, it's an unprotected area. They can go from uh, the Mexican border, probably Antelope Wells or Col uh, Columbus, go clear through to Colorado with virtually no law enforcement at all along this route. Um, so it's, uh, now it's a, it's a route where they can transport drugs or whatever. And it's, uh, it's totally different than it was. A matter of fact, we had a accident just maybe a half a mile below my house where there was one or two migrants killed and they were from South America. I've forgotten what uh, South American country they were from and there were several of them in the group that were felons or there was warrants out for their arrest when they picked them up. Now 20, 20 30 years ago there, there was always Border Patrol checkpoints along 180 which uh, I haven't ran into in years now, several years. And uh, they uh, were more aggressive at that time than they are now. It seemed to me like that they're, they've evidently made their presence in other areas rather than in this area.